Hey there guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today we're going to be working on part two of our match project application. And to start out with, like I said before, we're going to be using Vite. And just a quick explanation on what Vite is. It's a local server. So it's 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 a replacement. Well, not necessarily a replacement. I'm using it as a replacement for Create React app. It's a lot faster and streamlined. Uh, it's it's more efficient when I'm trying to proxy uh, with my server and client. So it's it's something I believe is the next step in our uh, application making process. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and create that. So beforehand, let's create uh, our folder. So let's just make directory and we'll make the directory and we're going to call it uh, match play. YouTube and we can CD into uh, match play YouTube clear and now we can get a uh, Vite. So the way we can do that is we can go right to Google and see it's spelled weird. I guess I think it's French. So it's like Vite for I think it means quick. Not too sure. <laughs> so um, yeah, it's French word for quick. So there we go. It's pronounced Vite. So uh, funny sounding name uh, but yeah in order to install this we can just go right here and you see we're using npm not yarn and we just go ahead and say npm create vite at latest and we come in here and we just do that so you need to install the following packages yes and what's our project name going to be called we can call this uh mm, let's just call this client yeah, and we're going to be using React. And just, uh, let's see, JavaScript. Uh, let's just use JavaScript. So now, we just have to run CD into client. Oh, sorry. We have to CD into, let's see, CD into client. And uh, npm run dev. Oh. CD into client. Uh, did we forget one step? Let's see. Uh, let's see. So we CD. Okay. I was trying to see if the, it has a step by step because I did not. I don't know if I showed you the whole thing for that one, but yeah, there we go. NPM install. And there it is. So we just have to NPM install first. I don't want to do it without showing you guys where I'm getting this information from. So npm, let's just say npm i, it's the same thing. And it's going to install all our dependencies for it. And then we can run dev. So npm run dev. Voila. And we're now working with localhost 5173. And typically it might, it's probably going to pop up as localhost 3000 for you. But because I am running 3000 with another server, so it's not going to run. Uh, 3000 for me so we can open this now and we'll go ahead and clear all that out later so now we can just um we can just go straight to open and yeah we just open that there we go yep trust the author and as you can see we have all our files here so what we can do now is also create within match play we can create another uh directory called server and we can cd into server there we go as you can see it there we clear this out and we're just going to say npm uh init and we just that's fine just go ahead and click ok and as you can see we have our package.json here um so all we have to do here is we can say start and it's just going to be nodemon index.js. And here we're just going to have a file called index.js. It's going to be our pilot file. Um, start index.js, index.js here. And now all we have to do is install dependencies. So for our server, we're going to be installing. Um, quite a lot of things so let's let's start with our uh, our client so with our client we have uh npm install axios um react 
router dom react i icons i think that's how you install that and websocket so let's go over to client our package.json and see if we have the dependencies yep we have everything we yep i guess react icons that's how you do it so we have all that so we're all set now for the server we have to install axios nodemon mongoose uh cores crypto um dot env express uh json web server we also need web server uh web socket so let's see if this takes music licensing reimagined let's see let's try that again json web server oh it's web token not web server there we go and we have all that so we can close out of this okay so now that we closed a lot of this we can come straight into let's see where is package.json there we go one two three four five six seven eight nine we have nine dependencies so we're all set so let's clear that out and now we can actually start working on our application so let's see npm run start there we go so we have this file working so we have nothing in it so we're, we're fine and let's set up our uh let's 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 just set up our client side first so we can actually see what's going on so package.lock where is it public source there it is um, we don't really need this, so I'm just going to pick this. Um, we don't need. Uh, let's just make sure we're picking the right things. Yeah, let's delete those two. Cool. And let's see. Mm, we don't need this. We can create, we're going to use our own CSS, so let's just take that out. So now we have to take this out um, and this and this. Cool. So let's see, is it broken? Nope, still works. Oh, that's because we didn't run it. Okay, this makes more sense. So now we don't need this. And with our return, we can just keep the div, but we can basically kick everything else out of the div. Actually, we don't need this div. So we just leave this. And let's say, hello world. Yep, there we go, works perfectly. So we're all set with this. It's not really that big of a thing we have to do. All we have to do now is say, uh, browser router, there we go. Uh, this is going to help us with our routing. And uh, for some of you, you might think I'm going a little faster, but like I said in the first one, this is more an advanced project, meaning everything we've done here, we're doing right now in terms of setting up the environment is pretty much, it's been done in every single application I've built. So um, if you're still stuck on how I'm setting this up, you should go back to the other ones and see how I'm setting up this React project up. Um, the only difference is I'm using V and we're not really doing that much in terms of, uh, in, in terms of, uh, clearing the, clearing the client side, uh, cleaning up the client side, which is doing the same thing we would have done. Some, some files are just named different things. Uh, so yeah, we can leave all this. It's not really going to bother us. Um, oh, last thing we need here, we clear this is npm install dot env. Okay, and clear. And so we have .env, and we're gonna make use of it. Let's clear this out. Now .env, we're gonna clear .env. Oh, nope, should say .env. Let's rename this. 
And in our .env, we're just gonna, huh. so we don't have anything in .env right now, so we just leave it that way. It's, it's not that big of a deal. Um, what we have to do now is create a file co called .git ignore. And with our git ignore, we're just gonna put our .env um, within git ignore. Yep, and we're all set. So that's it for our for our uh, environment setup. The only the last thing we have to do is install CSS. Uh, I'm very big on using CSS, so we're gonna come to CSS Tailwind uh, TailwindCSS.com. <laughs> Did I say I'm very big on using CSS? I'm very big on using Tailwind CSS. So we're gonna use Tailwind CSS um, to, to work with our, uh, we're gonna implement Tailwind CSS into our project. So we're gonna come to framework guides and we're gonna look for Vite um, and we're gonna install it the way they said to do it here. So um, let's see. Uh, let me see, can we bypass this one? Start by creating a new project. We don't have one set up. Yeah, so we, we already have this. So let's see if we could just bypass that first step. Um, client. There we go. And so when config file should be here. And we're just going to add this. And there we go. And we should have an index.css file. Uh, okay, we should not have deleted that, but that's fine. Um, we can just come straight to the source. So we come straight to the source folder and just add an index.css there and install that. Tailwind base components utilities. We just do that. Um, okay. And then we just run the build again. And we should be all set. Run dev. So let's see if we have some functionality here. So let's close this. Let us ignore that. Close, close. And let's see, div, div, class name, uh, background black. Okay, so we don't have that working right now. So let's see, h1, hello world, class name, background black. Okay, so our functionality is not working per se. Okay, so if we come over our main.jsx, we still have to, we forgot to import index CSS. There we go. So now our main.jsx has that file. So we have the import.css. Import. We have the index.css. So this works perfectly. So that's all we wanted to see. So if I say hello world again, bam, we're right there. Okay. So we don't have to put any of this in there. We're all set. Um, now we're going to be working predominantly with our server first. Uh, because it's a lot of code and it's it's just it's the fastest way to understand what's going on before we go to our front end so with our server file well sorry we already have index.js we just got to set it up and to set it up we're just gonna say um, const actually actually there's a faster way to do this so let's go to our match project and we're just going to index.css here the reason i'm doing it this way is because like i said we've done this before like this is we've done this multiple times so i'm just going to do it and then run through what we're doing together so um so oh that's something i forgot to install also express so we're going to be using the express framework uh, npm run start cool so here's what we're doing so we're going to install we're going to require express uh we're going to be calling the express app uh express uh uh we're going to be using app to refer to our express um so 
we're going to require env.config and remember we have env here that's what we're doing so our host name is going to be localhost uh, our port number we're going to make this 10,000 because we're working with yeah that's not going to work right now but it's going to be port name 10,000 uh, cores we're going to be using cores so make sure you have this exactly in the way I have it um, some of these I'm going to uh, I'm going to comment out until we need it uh, routes I'm gonna comment this out I'm gonna comment this out um, uh, we need a uh, mongoose cookie person uh, so that's something we forgot to do also so we need to get clear npm install cookie parser clear and we're gonna need cookie parser we're gonna be needing mongoose for our database we're gonna be needing uh, websocket so require websocket we're going to be needing JWT, which is JSON Web Token, our secret right now. We can just uh, comment that out. And these two we can comment out. Um, so now we're going to be using app.useCores, credentials being true. And origin is going to be 5, was it? 5173. Five, that's what it is. 5173. That is our origin. And we're going to be using the express.json and... Um, cookie parser so those are basically all we're gonna need so this should still there we go and let's see um, we're gonna take this to connect to mongoose however we're gonna comment it out and now we're gonna take this and that's it so yeah that just saved us a whole lot of time so when we connect the mongoose this is the logic we're going to be using and now for server we're going to say con server is equal to app dot listen the port number the host name and that so the app is running on this so for right now we don't need um we're just going to do this and we're going to comment this out so right now we don't need con server we can just say app dot listen and there we go so right now it says app is running on localhost 10,000 so it's working perfectly so what we want to do is we can close out of that we can close out of this and we're just going to leave it like that so remember you need the const express is equal to require express const app is equal to the express require.env.config const host name is localhost the port number is 10,000 we need the cores so we're going to require cores we need the cookie parser. We're going to require the parser, the cookie parser. Uh, cost mongoose. We're going to require mongoose. Everything else right now is not necessary. Uh, even this right now is not necessary. So uh, jump right to uh, const JWT is equal to require JSON web token. Um, and if you're just going to copy everything I have here, just make sure the ones with a path you don't copy because this path might change depending on what I name it. So, uh, just the things you're requiring in terms of the dependencies you're requiring is what you should just focus on and that's it and these are uh just boilerplate code you, i have them on every uh everything here is practically boilerplate uh, everything that's a dependency uh, i have them on every uh, uh app that i've built a web app that i've built that i've shown on this so that's why i'm just running through it with mongoose we're going to connect the mongodb uh and then console log Mongo, uh, database is connected unless we're going to console log the error um yeah and that's pretty much all we're doing and here we're saying app.listen to the port number host name and then we want to console.log so the function is console log the app is running on host name and port so here we have the app is running on localhost 10,000 and that is practically all we're doing so with that done um that's like I said, this is like our pilot file. So we want to come over to server and we want to create a new folder. And this folder is going to be called controller. And we're going to be following the MVC model, the uh, model views controller. And for the controller, we're going to be calling it auth controller.js. And here we're going to say cons axios is equal to require axios here we're going to say const um uh const let's see what else would we need 
uh, let's hop over to bcrypt. Const bcrypt is equal to require bcrypt. This might give us an error because I don't think I installed bcrypt, but if it doesn't, then we're fine. Yep, we're fine. And um, now we're gonna need in JWT is equal to require JW, JSON web token. Uh, we're gonna be needing uh, const crypto. I think crypto is pre-installed, so we don't really need to install that. Is equal to require crypto. And const, uh, yeah, we just leave it here for right now. And what we want to do now is create our register file. So we're going to say exports dot register. It's a synchronous request response. And we're going to say try catch. With the try, we're going to say const. We're going to begin this from our front end, from our body in the front end. We're going to say first name, password, and email. Those are the three things we need to register. So when we come over here, 3000, and when we click on register, that's what it's asking for here. So that's what we're going to be building out. So we're going to say require uh, request body. And now we want to write the logic. So if I should say if if there is no first name or there's no password or there's no email, then we want to return res.status of 401 dot json saying message please fill out form correctly bam so this is our or uh, our starter uh, the starting logic. So we want to do this just to make it streamline the process. We want to create a model folder. And in this model folder, we're going to have it set user.js. We're going to call it user.js. Here we're going to say const mongoose is equal to require mongoose. Uh, const user schema is equal to require no actually sorry is equal to new mongoose and we're going to create a schema and for our schema we're going to say first name and the first name is equal to type string require is going to be true Then we're going to say password and password type is going to be string require is going to be true. Then we need the email. And for the email, we're going to say type is string require is true and unique is true. And we need a comma here. And we need um, timestamps. So timestamps timestamps is set to true. There we go. Now we can say const user is equal to mongoose dot model user user schema now we want to export that so module that exports is equal to user so let's see if that that works so now we can come back to this 
and now we can import that user and say const user is equal to require um, model slash user. So here we want to ask if, and right after this, we'll create our data. Uh, we'll uh, create our database, but uh, we'll set up our database. Is what I mean with the uh, MongoDB. So what we want to do now is say um, if there's an existing user. So in this part, we're just checking to make sure that we fill the form out correctly. So we're just making sure the the front end isn't like isn't. Uh, the front end is requiring that all these three forms be filled out because that is what we require uh, uh, per our schema. So we're going to say existing user and for existing user, we're going to await user dot find. Well, find one. And we're going to be using email. Bam. So we're going to be. So what we're saying is. If there's an existing for to find out if there's an existing user, we're going to create this existing user um, variable and we're going to say within our database, we're going to find one email. We're going to find an email that's basically been uh, be, been inputted and submitted in our in our form. So so as you can see, there's an email form field. If the email has been put in there, let's say test at test .com, if that's already been put in there, it's going to let you know that there's an existing user. So um, the logic would say if there is an existing user, then. OK, then we want to say return res dot status of um, leaf 400 dot JSON. And we're going to say message user exists. Please log in. Cool. And now we can, if now, if there's no existing user, we can say uh, const hash password is equal to await bcrypt. So we want to hash this password, hash password, and we want to use 10. So after doing so, now we want to create that new user. So const new user is equal to um, uh, uh, that's fine. Let's say new user first name password email and this password is now going to be saved as hash password and then we want to say await oh, um new user dot save so we're saving it in the database so this is going to be we're saving this user this register we're saving it as a new user however um because as you remember when we register a new user we take them directly to our profile page for them to create a new profile well to finish out their new profile so we want to say const new profile is equal to new profile and uh, we want to say user dot well user new user dot underscore id so what's going on here is we're going to create uh, a model here well a profile model and we're going to be linking that profile with the user so in order to do this we're going to say const uh, mongoose is equal to require mongoose 
um, now we're gonna say um, const just like we did here where is it uh, user we're gonna say uh, const uh, what should we call it let's call it profile equals new yeah because here we called it user schema so let's call it profile schema that that's fine too profile schema is equal to new uh, new uh, mongoose uh, and then we're gonna create the schema and the schema is gonna say user and we're gonna be referring that user to let's do this first we're gonna say type mongoose dot uh, schema dot types dot object ID and we're gonna refer it to user let's make it lowercase user so what this is saying is now we're gonna connect this profile schema well, well this user field is gonna be connected to this user model right here so that's what we're doing here we're connecting the object ID here the type to the user right here so the it, these two are pretty much connected uh, now we want the first name Music licensing. and the first name would be type string and we're just gonna do this a good number of times um, let's do this again there we go because we're gonna have first name we're gonna have a bunch of criterias we're gonna have birth date date not data um, we're gonna have rating okay we're gonna have email and backup email and let's see let's see if we could just grab it from here profile oh yeah we didn't call it profile schema so uh Oh yeah, so we need, I'm just gonna grab all this because I don't wanna type all that out again. So <clears throat> we're gonna have backup email and the type is gonna be string. It's gonna be unique because we don't wanna have more than one. I believe the email should also be unique. No, it's not, so that's fine. So um, the type is string, the, 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 it's gonna be unique and it's gonna be sparse. And I wrote down here, it allows multiple documents to have a null val value for the for the unique index. And pra basically, um, you know what? D let's not dive into that. D it's not it's not that important. <laughs> so uh, just know if we don't have this sparse here, if you create any account and it's the that backup email is null or it's it, it's the same as something else it's going to throw an error so if you have sparse it makes it, it lets the database know that all right this is a different it, it, it it's a different backup email it's not just null even if it's null it's it's we're gonna put something in there it, it, so null is acceptable so that's the easiest way i could put it uh that's why i said we don't it's not that necessary right now so we just don't worry about it uh, but just know if you don't have that, you're going to have a lot of errors being thrown at you. Uh, so time to play string, gender, string, selected days. Make sure this is string also. And we're going to have the same timestamps, which is true. And after doing so, we're going to do the same thing we did in user. So let's just copy this. And the only difference is here, we're going to have it as profile. And this is going to be called profile. And this is going to be profile schema. And we're going to export it as profile. This should be capitalized. Cool. So now that we have this, I'm going to just close out of this. We can now import const uh, profile. Require model slash profile cool so now we have this profile right so there we go 
Yeah, so now we're creating a new profile immediately after uh, registering. So we're gonna say user is new user that ID, and because we're doing so, like I said, because here the user now object ID is referring to the user ID. It's referring to this user schema. So that's what we're doing here. So uh, we have that. Now we're gonna empty out the fields, and we're gonna say first name is empty, and actually. Let's do this. First name is going to be empty. Time to play is also empty. Um, selected days is going to be empty. Rating is going to be empty. Backup email is going to be email underscore backup yes yeah, about that right uh, and then we're gonna have birth date actually let's see within profile let's make this just one word birth date yeah because we're gonna have trouble with that if we don't do that let's close this out uh, birth date is going to be an empty string and we're all set. And now we're gonna await new profile dot save. Cool. So now let's 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 look at it in in uh, theory. So let's say my first name is test one two three, and my email is test one two three at test dot com. Test one two three. Yep. So what this code is saying is since I'm not an existing user, I know I'm not. So um, we're going to be hashing this password and creating this user and we're going to save this in the database. And now we're going to be taken right to this profile page and all these fields should basically be empty. So submit. And. Well, I lied. So because there's another group of code that we have later on there's another uh there's another piece of logic we have later on down the road these are not going to be empty but you can basically see that gender is empty rating is empty days available to play is empty time to play is empty uh birthday there's a code that we're going to insert later on that's going to pick today as the birthday um or tomorrow or whatever so uh as you can see backup is what we pick, picked here as the backup email so that's why it's showing up as such but basically that's it so let's log back out so now we're going to associate the uh the new profile with the user so what we're going to say is new user dot profile is equal to new profile new profile dot underscore id so now we're we're connecting we're we're, we're connecting the, the the profile ID to the new user's profile. That's exact. That's all we're doing here. Um, so that way in the database it's connected, and we're gonna say await new user dot save. So we're gonna save that new user again. And the reason we're doing this twice is because here we're saving it, uh, uh, we're saving the new pro the profile to the user. So we're gonna do it here. We're doing this here again. So that's pretty much it. And so now we're now going to return res dot status of two hundred, meaning um, the user is created and what we want to do is we want to send that user ID new user dot ID we want to send that there we go so now what you want to do is finish it up 
So here we're sending this because we're going to be making use of it in the front end. So that's the only reason we're doing that. So uh, catch error. I'm going to say console.log. Well, just console.error is fine. And it's error. And it's going to be error. And we're going to be returning res.status 500.json. message there was an internal server error and we're pr practically all done with our register portion so now how about the login how do we log in so that's what we're going to be working on right now so um that was exports.register so this is going to be exports.login is equal to a sync Request response. Bam. Okay. And practically, basically, we're going to be doing something similar, but not all the way through. So for login, what we're going to say is const email password. That's the, those are the only two fields we're going to be needing is equal to request body. So we're going to be getting this from the body of the email. And we're gonna use try catch. And here, we, <coughs> sorry, here we're gonna say const user is equal to await user dot find one email. So the same thing we did in register. And we're gonna try and find that user. And if there's no user, so if there's no user, we're going to say return res.status and it's going to be a 401 with a JSON message stating um, invalid credentials. So meaning we can't find you in the database. So we just got to keep moving. Um, const is password valid. And this is, we're trying to decrypt the password. Well, we're trying to compare it, not decrypt it. Let's use that word. So a way because our password is currently hash. So now we want to compare the hash to what we have. So password with user dot password. So this is if the pass, this is if the user is not, well, this logic is if the user is not, uh, uh, in the database this says if the user is in the database then we want to compare the password to see if the password is correct um, semicolon if the password is incorrect then we're just going to return uh, a status code of 401 at json saying uh, uh, what is it going to say? <laughs> Error message. And this is going to say, uh, actually, Music licensing let's just imagine. do it this way. Error message. And the error message is going to say, um, invalid credentials because you don't have the Forgive me for my spelling. <laughs> so, uh, you guys might catch that I'm spelling things wrong. It's it's not that I can't spell. It's just I just type way faster than I should be sometimes, and so I just misplace the spelling. Um, so that's if the password is uh, is incorrect. And now we're gonna write another logic that says if the user dot profile, if there's no user dot profile, meaning if that user doesn't have a profile created, then we want to return um uh, res dot status of 200 dot json um and in the json we want to say message uh, 
profile incomplete and we want to send over the user ID which is going to be the user um, dot ID so what we're saying here is um, when we try and log in, we're getting the email and the body and the password from the body here. So we're getting the email. So this is login, email, and the password. And if there's no, so we're going to query the database and say, hey, is this email in here somewhere? Database says, no, sir. There's no email like that. We're going to return straight to the front end uh, invalid credentials. And we're going to send that to the front end. Hey, there's invalid credentials. It's not going to let you through. However, if the user says, if if the database says, yeah, we got somewhere like that in here, then it's going to say const is password valid. We're going to await that and compare. We're going to await this, uh, this, uh, this logic. We're going to say compare the password with the user password because in the, in the, in the, in a database it's it's hashed so the only way to know if that's a real if that password is legit is by comparing it if the pa if the database says no son like that that password is not valid um it's just going to spit out an error message saying invalid credentials however if that user if that if that password is valid then we're going to move on to this logic so okay now you're let in but if you're let in and it says user dot profile and the user the the profile for that user is not uh accessible uh, then we want to return a 200 message saying hey yeah you were able to log in however your profile is incomplete so take this with you this user id and the front end is now going to be able to use this information to create a logic that will make you finish up your profile um in the so that the, this is all the back ends doing and then the front end works its magic so after doing so now we can come in and now create uh our token so we're going to be making use of uh um of a jwt token so now we're going to say jwt.sign and for those that don't know what i'm talking about here uh i need you guys to go back to the other uh videos because i have done this extensively so uh, right now, I'm just going to go ahead and act like everyone knows exactly what JWT is doing. Secret. Right now, there's no secret. We're just going to put secret, though. Um, I'll create that later. And we're going to say uh, it expires in one hour, probably. Yeah, one hour. And that's fine. And now we're going to take a cookie. Res.cookie. And we're going to say... Um, we're going to name this cookie auth token. We're going to put the token itself within the cookie and the token is carrying this. Uh, the uh, the token is the mother load for all this information. And now we're going to create an object and say path. And we're going to say uh, HTTP only is true. We're going to say max age is going to be 36,000, I think. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, and this is gonna make one hour. There we go. So that makes for one hour, secure. It's gonna be false. And we're set. Now, that we have this cookie and stuff set up we're going to say if there's no user profile and age or there's no user Music licensing, we imagine. dot profile okay you know what that's a lot to type out <laughs> so i'm just going to go over here find the login logic and take this there we go just minimize that do this so now we're gonna say if yeah so now we're gonna say if there's no you if there's no user uh profile dot aged no user dot profile dot time to play no user dot selected days then what we want to do is say return a status code return res dot status 
of uh, 200 dot JSON and it's going to say message profile incomplete incomplete um, and uh, first name Music licensing is going to account. be user geez user dot first name That's pretty much it. So what, what we're saying here is when we log in, if these fields are not uh, the profile, the if the age, the time to play and select the days are all empty, then we want to basically tell the uh, tell the front end that, hey, the profile is incomplete and send them the first name. And then the front end is able to write a logic that's going to finish out what we want to do, what we want accomplished. So. Um, and you'll see what that is when we do the front end do so and now we're going to have another if and this if is going to say if user dot profile dot age is equal to an empty string or user dot profile dot um it should be lowercase profile dot um time to play is equal to uh, well an empty string again or uh, user dot profile dot uh, selected days is equal to an empty string then let's just do this there we go then we want to say um, res dot status 200 and this is going to say message successful um well login successful and we're going to be passing in the first name and that's going to be um user dot first Nay. There we go. Cool. So now if all these are empty strings, we want that. And then we're going to say login successful. Uh, and then now we can work with the um, error handling. So console.log the error and res.status. Uh, 500 um, dot json message server error cool so this is practically the whole setup for the login and the and the registration for uh for the app that we're building we also need a way to authenticate that it's us trying to that it's us trying to uh, access these uh, these applications. Well, these features. So exports dot authenticate is equal to a sync, and it's going to be request response. And here it's going to say const auth token is equal to request dot cookies dot auth token. Remember we named the the cookie auth token. So we're trying to get that um, we're trying to get the the token from the cookie so if there's no auth token so if the if there was nothing within the cookie then we want to resp uh, return or response status of 401 dot json uh, here message is going to be authentication. Music licensing reimagined. Authentication failed. And it's going to say token missing. Just so the front end knows what's going on. Um, cool. Now, 
we can have a try catch. So now if we do have the auth token, what we want to say is const decoded token, because we have to decode the token and get what's in it. We have to say jwt.verify. And we're going to use the auth token and we're going to use something called secret. And right now the secret's still empty. So I, I realized that I'm going to create that in a second. And then const user ID is going to be called decoded token dot user ID. And we're going to need const user and it's going to be await user dot find by ID. And we're going to be finding the user ID. Now, um, we can say if there's no user, want to return uh, res.status of two, oh, sorry, 400. And it's going to say JSON message of user not found. So that way we know there's no user. However, if there's a user, you want to say token expiration expiration is equal to new date. So we want to give the uh, the token a time to expire dot expiration um, um, times a thousand. So this is going to say when the token should expire. Um, now, if token expiration is less than a new date, so meaning if it's not expired yet, then uh, I mean, if it is expired, it's less than a new date. Then we want to say return res dot status of 401. And we're just going to let the front end know that, hey, man, your your tokens expired like it's a useless token message uh, authentication failed token Music licensing reimagined. expired and then we move on now we want to say if it's not expired now we want to say request the user id is equal to user id and next so now we want to be able to Okay, so that's what we forgot to do. Next. So now we want to move this to the next middleware. So we want to, so this is going to be a middleware, this, this auth authenticate. And we want to be able to pass, anytime we use this as a middleware, we want to be able to pass this request, this user ID onto the next piece of middleware. And now we can just say uh, console dot error error. In res dot status, we can make that 500 dot JSON. And the message is going to be user not found. And we're set. So now, um, how do we now get the user information from our authenticate? Um, so we're going to say const user ID because remember this user ID can be taken from the, the authenticate middleware. And yes, I do know the, the, the secret has not been like, uh, created yet. So I will create that in a second. Let me just finish up this, uh, this user info so we know that it, it just flows into each other so try and we're going to say const user is equal to await user defined by id and this time we're going to be using user id because that's going to house um our user information so if there's no user then we want to say return res.status of 400 dot json uh message user not found cool 
um, however if there is a user we're gonna return uh, the status of 200 wait hold up there it is <laughs> res dot status of 200 with the JSON message Uh, of um, actually we don't even need a message we just say first name is user dot first name and user ID cool so we're sending back the information we need which is just the first name and the user ID because um, we're going to be using that later on so console dot error um, and it's going to be I error and this is going to be rest.status of 500.json with a message that states server error cool so just like that we're done with our um, uh, authenticate uh, authentication and uh, user information uh, middlewares or uh, uh, user information controller so now what we want to do is we want to get a way to uh, retrieve our profile from the database so if we saved it how do we retrieve it so that's the part we want to work on at this point so we're going to be calling it exports dot get profile is equal to a sync because we're going to be needing that and this but before i do this like i said i'm going to be needing um the secret so we can go ahead and create the secret here okay so um we're going to be saying sorry i just i just have to make sure i had it all out before I use the terminal okay so we open up the terminal and so basically we're going to be using this code I wrote here um, writing it out just makes it easier to uh, to type it into the to the terminal so first you want to do is uh, use node so just go to node.js so by just typing node into your terminal and then require crypto uh, See what I mean? Like, if you just type something wrong, uh, it's it's a, it takes a long while for you figure it out. If you do line by line, so random bytes, you want to go to sixty four dot to string. We there we go, and you want to say hex. So if you enter this, it gives you a long code, and this is gonna be your secret. So you just take this string, so. <clears throat> and what you want to do is go into your ENV and you want to name this uh, secret. So we're just going to call it secret and just type it in there that way. Mm. Okay, so we'll just do this. And so this is going to be the secret. And when you save that, the way to go about it is now come in here. Okay, so we don't need any of that uh, call this const secret is equal to um, require process not require sorry it's going to be process dot env Music licensing reimagined. dot secret doesn't have to be in caps so process geez I can't spell dot env that secret so that's gonna be the secret so um, now if you hover on this it should say string so we can take this out actually I'll just leave it um, let's see just in case we have to do it again yep there we go so string so I'm gonna change mine because um, the secret is something that only you should know. But basically, 
no one is cracking their string is why we do it this way using crypto but um i'll go ahead and change mine right now and then i'll get back to you guys once i'm done okay so now that i have my secret in there um the secret's good to go um now to further to go <laughs> to further the get profile logic we can now say const user id is going to be request dot user id and we can have try catch and within try we're going to say const users equal to await user dot find by id and we're going to be using user id but we want to populate the whole profile so Um, if there's no user, then we want to say res.status of 400.json is message user not found. If there is a user, we want to say const profile data is equal to um first name is going to be user dot first name um email is going to be user dot email so since you kind of get the idea here we're just assigning um uh so let's go we're just assigning um the the database values to this uh, to this uh uh variables so we're just going to say use it to this uh uh what do you call it to so these so in this object we're just assigning the the user variables so we're going to say user well the user not variables why can't i think <laughs> so uh in this object we're just assigning this user uh uh values so we're going to say user that profile that rating because here we're just getting the user and the email here. The rating is stored in the profile. Everything else is just stored in the user uh, user uh, database, but the rating is stored in the profile. So that's what we're doing here. Time to play is going to be user dot profile dot time to play. And I'm just going to copy the rest of it because <laughs> it's a lot. So uh, let's see, where are we? And select the days. Actually, I'll just copy it over here. Uh, time to play, select the days. There we go. And there we go. Okay. So we're just doing the same thing so the only one that doesn't use a user.profile is the only two are first name and email because they're stored just in the user data uh user database so now we want to say ca uh, catch for the catch we want to say console.error and we want to say error and here we want to say res.status a uh, status 500 uh, dot message um dot json sorry And it's going to be called server error. Cool. And now lastly, what we want to do is be able to update our, uh, our, our profile. So exports dot update profile is equal to a sync request response and here we're going to say the same thing user id is equal to request dot user id and now const we want to say first name um email the whole nine yards uh selected days uh rating backup email uh, what else did we have birth date 
and we're gonna say is equal to request so we're getting it from the body because remember we're updating it so we have to be getting it from somewhere so we're getting it from the body and we're gonna say try catch and we're gonna say um const user is equal to await user dot find by id and it's going to be user id and we're going to populate once more the profile i think it's capitalized actually let's make sure because that is a big difference it's lowercase music licensing reimagined yeah that that's a whole different thing so if there's no user like always we want to return res.status of um 400 with the json message saying uh user not found however if there is a user we want to say if um there is no selected days or selected days dot length is equal to zero then return res dot status 400 saying um, uh, please message Please select at least one day to play. So what we're saying here, and let's finish this actually. And um, um, now we want to say user. So if there is a uh, if there is a user you want to say user dot profile dot a uh, first name is equal to first name or user dot profile dot first name so what this is saying is if a new first name is given because remember we're updating it so if a new first name is given then we save we save that first name and we use that instead we populate that um so this would be the new first name that's given however if we don't have a new first name we're just going to take whatever's within the profile uh database that's saved as first name that's all we're doing here um in this one if there's no selected days basically remember when we log in so let's log in here's test oh so when we log in here and we go to uh, profile we want to make sure that days available to play is not empty because if it's empty <coughs> in our profile then we won't be able to save it so this is what this looks like so our profile if i want to update it now i just press something else and i click save profile but i'm not doing that uh, so that's pretty much all we have to do uh, now user.profile first name is that um, so now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find this and I'm just gonna copy that because that's a lot of code to write and I'm gonna minimize that okay and now we're doing the same thing so for example if the rating is something new something we just updated we update the rating we're gonna pick this rating and substitute it uh, for what's in the profile and what's in the database so we're resaving it to what's we're resaving uh, uh, what's in the profile with the new rating and we're doing that for every single thing here so now when we're done we can now say res dot say like await uh user dot profile dot save bam and now we can res dot status of 200 and uh with a json message states in uh, profile updated successfully 
and catch we can say console.log error and uh, res.status 500.json um, message um, server error. server error there we go and that's it so with this alone we're able to let's see what we have left um, yeah we have the logout and hero page components so we don't that's fine we don't really need this right now the controller should be uh, capitalized this might create a problem does it no it does not mm, yeah crypto is already automatically being used so we don't really need to we don't need to require it so yeah in the next one we're going to be working on front end and creating our routes in the back end so that we can transfer data vice versa and that's pretty much it so let me know what you guys think of the project so far uh, are you guys excited about it um, let me know if you have any questions uh, don't forget to leave the like leave a like and comment your questions or whatever in the in the comment section and please don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you guys on the next one peace List I O. Music licensing reimagined.
Cyclist.io. Artlist.io. Music licensing reimagined. Music licensing reimagined. List I O Music Licensing Reimagined. List I O Art List I O Music licensing reimagined. List.io Music licensing reimagined. Artlist.io
music licensing we imagined. List I O. Art List I O. Music licensing reimagined. List I O Music Licensing Reimagined. List I O Music Licensing Reimagined. List I O Art List I O Music licensing reimagined. List I owe. 